we have observed that for a bivariate data, I have plotted the scatter plots, I have computed the Carl Pearson correlation. Now the question is, if I'm telling, I have some correlation. So I have X and Y correlated. Now, what is the next step? What do you have to do with this information? You have got some value on R. So I have some bivariate data. So I'm using this formula, simplified form, n sigma x y minus sigma x sigma y. So I'll apply the mathematical techniques and the value of R and here point nine. Now, what is this R indicating? How to interpret this value of R? That we'll look into now. And the first and foremost thing I want you to tell is please immediately after joining, mute yourself. So when you have R, I said your Carl Pearson or any other form of correlation, simple correlation always lies between minus one and plus one. And we say the value of R is very much, you know, or high if it lies in the region 0 0.5 to 1 or minus 0. Point, say minus 1 to minus 0. 0.5. If your R is very much closer to 0, so if it is ranging within minus 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.5, we call the correlation to be low. So again, we could further split this moderately high, very high and so on. But let us just stick to these two scales. So I have observed a high correlation. So one thing, this doesn't indicate the amount of the data. You can't say 98% of data are linear. So this interpretation or this information is not given, given by the data. So here we are expecting the amount or I could say what is the effect observed in my data because of Y. So that could be easily answered. And that is answered by another simple form of a function of correlation called as coefficient of determination. And that is simply defined as the squared value of R. Now, when I square the value of R, I could easily observe that it always lies between minus one and plus one. Now, larger the value of R square, much information of the uh, dependent variable is being given by the independent variable. So the influence is very high. So let me take, say I have this value R as 0 0.98. Then if I open the square of that, that indicates I have R square, which is 9604. So this indicates 96.04% of variation of variation of the dependent variable y is explained by your independent variable x. So this is the best information or conclusion what you can observe. So 96% of variation observed in y is explained by x. So, if you can easily control the value of x, and if you observe any new values or, you know, values of y missing, in that case, you can easily obtain the value of y based on the value of x. So, the next step is modeling the actual relationship. So, we said, yes, there exists a straight line relationship, and the uh, relationship is very much high, the correlation is very high, much of the information on y is provided by x, then what is the actual relationship? What is the actual equation of that uh, variable, that relationship? That is obtained by the next part of the analysis, which is called as regression analysis. So usually the regression and correlation analysis are done together. So when we say there is high correlation, we do uh, regression analysis. Even in case of low correlation, you could come up with an equation. But since the correlation is very low, low correlation indicates R square to be very low. That means much of the information of Y or the variation of Y is not at all given by that X. So you have to select another X, which is directly influencing the value of Y to 
study the variable y. Now coming to this uh, regression analysis, so what here we basically do is we try to obtain the actual straight line relationship between the x and y. Actual straight line relationship between x and y. And we could come up with two such cases of relation as said your variables are such that you can control your y so that you can observe what is happening to your x so the first one so here we say this is independent you can have a control on this this is dependent you are observing what happens to this as and when i experiment with the values of y another case is y is equal to f of x in this case x is independent y is dependent so if you are establishing a relationship between x and y such that you are experimenting on y to observe what is happening on x or you have observed some new values of y for which you want to estimate like say for example if my age is equal to say uh, 60 years what happens to the density of bone or the mass of bone does it increase decrease what exactly is the amount in that case that could be estimated based on certain observations you have already recorded some people's age and their bone densities so based on that for a specific value of y you could estimate the specific value of x and same in the second equation now the first equation where you are want to estimate the value of x based on y is called as regression line or regression equation of x on y and that is of the form say x is equal to some let me say a0 plus a1 x a1 y so basically i'm using the same approach y is equal to mx plus c in place of c i'm taking the constant a0 in place of m i'm taking a1 why we actually write this is that when we look into the concept of multiple correlation and multiple regression then what is this multiple correlation multiple regression so as said my food habit is directly dependent on age so if you're suspecting that then you are talking about just simple relation but food habit also you know is dependent on your climatic conditions or your gene conditions your certain other factors which are influencing that so both x and z are influencing y so in that case i could have say another uh, form say a to z where both my z and y are influencing the value of x in that scenario so that's why we mathematically write the constant first and then followed by the set of variables so we use this regression equation whenever you want to obtain the value of x and you have to your specific for a given specific value of y and certainly you know I could give you the another form that is the regression line for x on y now since we are talking about only two variables so it is better you define your x as always the independent variable y as always the dependent variable so as said certain cases are such that both could be interdependent and you know from one point of view x could look as independent or the case y is dependent or from another point of view, x is dependent, y is independent. So in such situations, we differ them as x and y. But in a more general situation where you just have a cause and effect, you just have cause and effect, and then you always take cause as x, effect as y. You want to study the what is the effect of x on y. In that case, you could usually look into the model y is equal to b0 plus d1x so what i'm telling is what are the variables which you see you can control pick all such variables as independent variables so you can control the intake of water you can control the amount of time you spend in exercise you can control the food habits so all such variables can be taken as x and your age your blood pressure your any other measure any other variable which is seen that x is affecting that that could be taken as the uh, dependent variable so this is the model so here again we'll use the 
concepts of mean, correlation, standard deviation in order to obtain the values of the constant. So I said I don't want you to confuse by giving you various formulas. So I'll just stick to this regression equation. So here we say our regression V1. So this is called as regression coefficient. A coefficient basically indicates the number just which is multiplied by multiplied to any variable. So this is regression coefficient of y on x d1x and that is simply given by r into standard deviation of y divided by standard deviation of x or you could simply call this as covariance of x y divided by variance of x. So if you have the value of covariance and variance you can obtain the value of b1 and then your b0 becomes simply y bar minus b1 into x bar. So compute the value of b1, substitute that here, you will get your b1. So we are using mean and standard deviations to compute the actual straight line relationship between x and y. So they have used the word regression, which literally means using the average or moving back to average. Now, there is another reason why they have coined the word regression to be exact. As said, for any bivariate data, based on different points of view, you could observe regression equation of x on y, regression equation of y on x. So two straight lines are possible. And whenever we have two straight lines on our xy plane, naturally they tend to point at uh, meet at a common point unless they are parallel and in case of the regression lines the common point of intersection happens to be x bar and y bar and that is another reason why this topic is called as moving back towards average so we have come you know far away from the computation of average and then we are going back to average in order to study the mathematical relationship between x and y. So this is about your regression concept. So you can use these formulas in obtaining the values of b0, b1. And if you could have some numerical values, let me say I have observed b0 as 3.5, where b1 is say five times of x, then the model is telling that your if you increase your x by a unit change that is if x increases by one it will be five times of increase of x in y so your y increases by five say for example if i say i'm talking about the time as well as marks so i have x as time of study y as marks so if i study for one more r an extra r that will fetch me five extra marks so that is how my x and y marks and time are behaving what in whatever the data I have collected. So generally speaking, this B1 indicates amount of change in y, amount of change in y for a unit change in x, for a unit change in x. So the regression, only the concept and the theory will be asked in the examination. There are no numerical problems. So you could have one problem, maybe a solved problem in your chapter 16. And as said in the first PC book, you have many such problems on in chapter 6. So I said it is a very basic book. So there we are not directly introducing the straight line forms for and as said it is. Uh, the subject is, you know, uh, teach for, taught for the um, commerce students. So they don't have the knowledge of straight lines or slope or tan theta. So that's why we have come up with a simple explanation of regression there. But whatever the explanation given, ultimately when you obtain the regression equation, it comes in the form of this. So there the notations, the formulas could be different but the basic forms remain the same. So I have used B1 according to your book, but in the other books, you could use the notations like alpha, alpha one, beta, beta one, or you could simply use M and C also. So I'll 
stop the session here today. So we'll look into the problems on correlation. So I'll show the procedure for one problem. I'll use both the formulas. So we have R is equal to sigma x minus x bar into y minus y bar divided by sigma x minus x bar whole square sigma y minus y bar whole square the whole square root which is simply sigma x y by sigma x square sigma y square where you are taking your small x as x minus x bar small y as y minus y bar and if you want to avoid the calculations for the means and standard deviation you could use this form sigma x square by the sigma x whole square and sigma y square minus sigma y whole square now in your book at certain places this notation the bar on x and y is missing so you could just observe x is equal to x minus x y is equal to y minus x actually they mean it is the deviation from x bar and y bar and small and capital cases are usually messed up in the book so you clearly write down so you can use this whenever you are taking x as the otherwise if you just use the given values instead of taking x minus x bar you will end up getting an answer which is more than one which is not the value of correlation So before going to the numerical problem, if you have any doubts regarding correlation regression analysis, you could ask me. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, what is the difference between correlation and regression? In correlation, we are trying to answer whether there is any relation. So your question is, is my variable x influenced by y? Is my, uh, say, age affecting the bone density? So you have that question. So to get an answer, yes or no, you will do a correlation analysis. What is the exact relationship? Now, what happens to my bone density when I reach my age as 55, when I reach the age as 60? So you need answer for that question. So you need to have a mathematical relationship. So the actual relationship is established in the regression part. So here you just get an answer as yes, there is relation. No, there is relation. Yes, there is correlation. No, there is correlation. If you say yes, then what is the actual relationship? How can I model it? What is the behavior relationship between X and Y? That is obtained in the regression part. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, range of regression coefficient? Range what is of the range coefficient of regression coefficient? Could be anywhere in the real line. So your regression coefficient, beta 1, beta naught, could take any value from minus infinity to infinity. But when you look into the values together, if I say my regression coefficient, one value is taking a number more than one, naturally the other one will be less than one. So you could have the case where both are below one, but both cannot be above one together. Both cannot be above one. So this rule could be easily remembered. But always, as said, my correlation is such that if you obtain the regression coefficient of x on y, regression coefficient of y on x, so as I'm using a1 and b1, so I'm using the relationship that y is uh, independent and I have the coefficient here. You are similarly modeling an equation for y based on x. So if you look into both the coefficients, so they have, so here, so I should mean A1. So here I could see that the product will always come to be the square of your calculus and correlation, or I could say R is the geometric mean of the regression coefficients. Okay. 
thank you sir okay any other questions so what i do is i'll take the excel sheet in order to do the calculations so you people just think that i'm using a whiteboard to do the calculations so you can take your calculators I have some variable here. So let me take age and then some y values, say the blood pressure. So I'm recording some seven random observations, could be patient or any person. I'll say at one at two recorded the values. So if I want to use the method of mean. I need the total of X and total of Y to compute the means. My calculator is there. Compute the totals, total of X and total of Y. Total of X is coming to 386. Total of Y is 832. So if I, you want to use the second form, which is based on the X into Y, X square, Y square. Let me keep the formula. This is the second method, which is based on just the product of x, product of y, sorry, product of x and y, squares of x and squares of y. So this is my r. So what is this telling us is, if you have the data x and y, you need first the count of n so how many pairs you are taking so you have the value of n then we need total of xy see the next term is total of xy then i need total of x total of y i need total of x square total of y square so if i'm using this formula basically i um, have to compute three columns which is x into y and then x square and then y square. So three columns have to be computed. Madi, calculator said that quickly do x into y, x square, y square. If one problem is there, that so calculate you are the error method alone marks the name. And you have easy as a te other name calculate.
ಜೊತೆಯಲ್ಲೇ ಮಾಡ್ತಿರೋ ಅವ್ರು ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಇಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಎನಿ ಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೀ ದೆನ್ ಐ ಎಲ್ ಪಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಎಲ್ ವೆಯ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಚ್ ಐ ಕುಡ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಮೈ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ is anyone doing no reply so i'm not worried then so in this method i said three columns has to be computed for the given values of x and y the first one is x into y x square y square so i'll multiply 12 and 81 which is the first pair 12 and 81 is 972 then you have 23 and 82 which is 1886 so obtain the product for the each pair of observations and then obtain the total of that so for every x and y you can compute the product and now i need total of that so my total of x y which is sigma x y has come to 32670 next terms required are total of x square so i have to obtain the square of every x so the first value is 12 12 square is 144 then the next value is 23 23 square is 529 so you are doing the square of every value of x so obtain that and obtain the total of that and similarly obtain the values of y square my first value of y is 81 81 square is 6561 and next i have to obtain 82 square which is 6724 and similarly obtain the square values of every y and obtain the total of that okay so you got your n you have sigma xy you have sigma x sigma x square sigma y square substitute that in the formula and carefully evaluate so you'll have numerator so i have n which is 10 n into sigma xy sigma xy is 32 617 minus sigma x into sigma y sigma x is 386 into sigma y sigma y is 832 and then i'll have divided by square root of x i'll have n into sigma x square so the first term will be n which is 10 into sigma x square sigma x square is total of x square so square to position not kodi it is inclusive it is only for x so it is 10 into 18880 minus sigma x whole square sigma x is 386 so you have to square 386 here and then place its value so when i obtain the square for 386 so i get 1 4 8 9 9 6 and the second term is again same thing with respect to y y n into sigma y square sigma y square is 69304 minus sigma y whole square sigma y is 832 i need the square of 832 and if i look into the square of 832 that is 69222 this is the second i mean the denominator second term in the denominator okay so now what we have to do we have to just simplify so first do the products and then take the difference so in the numerator i'll have 10 into 32617 which becomes 32670 and then product of 386 with 832 is 321152 and then in the denominator i'll have divided by and the square root so the first term in the denominator is 10 into 
18,880, which is 18880. After obtaining the product, subtract it from 148996. So that gives me 39,884. And similarly, if you look in the second term, 10 into 69,304, which produced 693040 minus 69224. That is 816. Now take the product of the terms in the denominator and take the square root. Yes, I can, I can completely use the functions in the Excel as um, Madam Kinnari is, can we, yes, but many of uh, the fellow participants doesn't have, I guess, laptop or they are unaware of the application of Excel, I guess. Exam mode that you have to um, ask Madam Hemlata. Usually it will be online, but we expect the least calculations in your answer booklet. Oh. So coming to the numerator difference, 32,6170 minus 32,1152 is producing 55,018. And in the denominator, you have 39884 into 816 which produces some number 32 lakh and so on uh, to take the square root of that and then divide it by the yes so i'll have three two so let me complete this two five four five three four four and when i take the square root i will get five thousand Seven hundred and four point eight five two six. So this is the value after taking the square. Now obtain the quotient of this. So five thousand eighteen divided by five thousand seven hundred and four. That will produce zero point eight seven nine six. So this is our correlation. So please be careful in the computational steps. If you are very much good in the calculations, you can avoid all these computational steps in a single formula, in a single calculation using the calculator or your Excel sheet, you can give the answer. So what we are observing is, we are observing a high correlation. As said, if I value of R comes out to be positive, so I will conclude R is positive. What is the meaning of positive correlation? Don't define correlation in terms of its value, use the definition. Positive correlation is indicating that an increase in X is leading to increase in Y. So my question, whether my BP increases with my age, the question is yes, as your age increases, you will observe increase in the blood pressure. And since this is some hypothetical data, and um, you know, that relationship is being observed, but when you statistically observe or collect some random observations, the actual behavior relationship could be easily observed. So R is positive and high, high because it is close to plus one. And this is the simplest possible method of finding the correlation. So if you, if I want, I, I could just say that follow this particular method to find correlation. You know, if you're using simple calculator, then this method gives answer quickly and you can rectify the mistakes also. So if you're getting an answer R, which is above one or below minus one, you could rectify where the mistakes are either in the product or in the calculation part or in the totaling part and things could be easily computed. So this is how you compute the correlation using the second method. Now I'll go back to the first method. So I'll just clear the things. Anyhow, I'll post a video. You can review the video and see the calculations once again. Just record the value of R here, point 
So one of the other methods of computing the correlation is by actually computing the mean. So this three columns x, y, x square, y square, they are not required. Now what I need is x bar as well as y bar. So we know the formulas of x bar and y bar. x bar is sigma x by n, y bar is sigma y by n. So calculate them using your calculator. So I'm observing total of x is 386 so the mean will be 386 by 10 which is 38.6 and total of y is 832 so mean of y will be total divided by number of observations 832 divided by 10 which is 83.2 if you look into the formula what all columns you need so first you have to compute the difference of x from x bar difference of y from y bar and you need the product of that as well as the squares of that So we'll look Sir, can you please explain the x bar? Um, how did you get the calculation? X bar is mean. What is the formula to find mean of a variable? What is the formula to find mean of a variable? If you have x given to you, sum of x divided by sum of x divided by number of observation because it is raw data, right? You have only x values. Yes. So the formula is total of x divided by n. We have already computed the total. Total of x is 386, total of y is 832, and we have n is equal to 10. So we have x bar, which is sigma x by n, y bar, which is sigma y by n. They come out to be numerically equal to 38.6 and 83.2. So I got the now I have to obtain the difference of x, x bar from the value of x. So next column will be obtaining the difference. So from every value of x, you have to compute the difference from x bar. So first value will be 12 minus 38.6. So that produces minus 26.6 so i'll directly record it so this minus my mean 38.6 and do this for all the values of x and to check whether you are correct use the property of mean what does property of mean tell if your x bar is actually the arithmetic mean and if you obtain x minus x bar and its total, the total should come to zero. So yeah. our mean 38.6 is correct. Now obtain y minus y bar. So even if you look into the total of y minus y bar, if your mean is correctly computed, total of y minus y bar will also come to zero. So I have the first value of y, which is 81. So I have to do 81 minus 83.2. We have to join back. So which gives me minus 